Very good morning. Welcome. You're watching India Market Open and uh, it's looking like a bit of a tricky morning. Very. <laughs> You're being kind. I'm being kind. A bit of a tricky morning. Maybe the inherent domestic investor resilience will come to the rescue. But uh, all things considered, uh, some headwinds out there globally. Uh, as well as, of course, this uh, Mauritius uh, FPI tax rules which have come to light. Yeah. I mean, and, and maybe... <sighs> Maybe, just maybe, uh, because of the fact that this was done on March 7th, so many people moved to Gift City, and we'll talk about it in detail with two very eminent experts. So needless to say, their opinion will be a lot more worthwhile. But uh, me, uh, so could that maybe just bring about a small caution for a day, if at all? But, but Tavana, just globally, for, for, for uh, gold to do what it is doing right now, on comics northwards of 2400, deep inside of geopolitics and somehow it just seems that that and it's right up your alley mm. but it seems uh, that it's fraught with risks out there yeah i would say it's balanced overall and yes um, gold prices um, are a worry but look at the kind of gold purchases by central banks look at china china when a china starts buying gold in such large quantities you're bound to skew the market uh, so yes, the other geopolitics of it, of course, is crude, and we'll talk a bit about that in a second. But um, if you uh, look at the notes out this morning, also mm. on crude, pain maybe till Q2. But on the other hand, even as demand uh, improves, the supply shocks remain. Uh, Israel is waiting for retaliatory attacks from Iran. Can US you is saying it couldn't happen. But on the other side of it, I think those buffers to you know how much you utilize uh, crude and crude derivatives are also growing whether it's shale whether it's the ev play by end of the decade yeah. and, and even whether it's uh, you know uh, supply constraints so yeah. on, on balance i think maybe not too panicky right now not too panicky just that just that overarching fear that we are at valuations which are not necessarily cheap uh, there is geopolitics out there and if the inflation print is anything to go by and the US yields are anything to go by and if that is an indication of what demand will do, maybe we will not see crude prices retreating back to 70-75 yeah. if they stay at these levels because of pure demand and supply cuts then, I don't know, some something on the anvil makes you a bit Queasy. Your spidey, your spidey yeah. senses are tingling. <laughs> <laughs> Your spidey senses are tingling this morning. You get Just, that about politics so much. Yeah. Something that gets that yeah. to me about markets this yeah. time. No, perhaps, perhaps, uh, no doubt. But I just want to spend a, yeah, a yeah. second on the FBI uh, Mauritius uh, news before we get to the global cues and why that's important and why we, it's our big story this morning. So essentially, and I'm putting this very, very simply, um, there was a new set of rules on March 7th. They've come to light only on Wednesday. It essentially means that that uh, FBIs that are based out of Mauritius now have to prove that they are there not just because of the tax advantages that Mauritius provides. So they have to prove that they've been around uh, much before they started investing in the form of FBIs in Indian equity. That means you have an office, you have staff, you've been there for a while. Now, now what's not clear is that if this becomes retrospective, that means you have to prove that you were there with all of these conditions much before so that grandfathering bit comes in and you know so that's my take it might uh, spook the markets a bit today sentimentally you might have some impact uh, today and you're gonna have to look at that point and uh, you know I've given those uh, pointers as well and if we could pull those up of um, you know, you might have an initial kind of a reaction. Clarity is required on whether these rules are applicable retrospectively, and I think that shouldn't be left out in the open. The treaty shopping issue, which is at the core of this, that, you know, you can't go to a place which has um, relatively better or more lenient tax rules and because of treaties between India and that country and then start uh, investing like that. That needs a more comprehensive look. So we'll have to see what all, uh, what the impact is, some great data, and I just wanted to pull this up very quickly, that Agam has uh, pulled out, that as of Feb 2024, the highest amount of FBI uh, presence in India was from Mauritius, second only to the United States. Uh, and we'll get that chart up uh, for you. So you had about uh, 26 lakh crores uh, from US and from Mauritius about little less than five lakh crores singapore luxembourg and uk are next in that line so you know those are some points to take so maybe in that sense you might have some impact today 
Yeah, but just a bit, and, and again, just dwelling for 30 seconds on this before you move on. So, uh, is it that material? That's that's the question that I am asking uh, of this revised India Mauritius Tax Treaty. One, large FPI sets from across uh, geographies have moved to Gift City, are in the process of moving to Gift City. So that is one thing which presumably lessens the impact. Various estimates that I read, spoke to brokers, sp uh, spoke to uh, fund managers, not brokers really. Um, and uh, various estimates peg the Mauritius-based FPIs holding at, at sub 10% of the overall FPI holding in India. So it used to be very large back about 15 years ago when the first murmurs of this came about. Now less than 10%, so not that dramatic as it used to be. Mm. And the agreement signed on 7th of March. So technically not new news, out in the open right now, but the FPIs and the Mauritius government and people investing through that route knew about this maybe some changes have already been taken so yeah. could be interesting yeah could be interesting and we'll talk more about it okay let's get to global queues uh, we've uh, spent a little time on the big story before we've gotten to global queues this morning but because it's a key one that needs an explanation up top but talking about what's happened uh, in the US remember um, uh, on Wednesday you saw a complete sort of very adverse reaction in US markets because of the hotter than expected inflation numbers that retraced you had a sharp rebound in the Nasdaq after the Wednesday sell-off and what you're seeing on your screens right now is futures. Dow has been flat, the futures are also flat, but if you pull up um, uh, the indices and see how Nasdaq has fared, it was fabulous. Now what's happening there is again the mega caps coming into play and this whole boom that the, the AI flavor so in sorts is back and Apple was the shining star in that sense because of a Bloomberg report that said their new line of Macs are now going to be AI powered uh, NVIDIA the favorite when you want to play the AI theme did well uh, so did uh, and uh, Amazon Amazon also had a fabulous run so uh, that's what's uh, you know getting that Nasdaq up and about but does that mean that inflation fears are gone no not at all look at the tenure and uh, that becomes very clear the you know to the point that Neeraj was also making that um, the trajectory is only upwards so you saw the tenure uh, go up to about over 4.45, 4.57% actually, uh, because of the inflation number. Now, just a quick recap on that in case you missed it. For March, uh, CPI was 3.5% month on month. Remember, the Fed wants two. Even the core inflation figure way above comfort zone, month on month figure up 0.4%, more than expectations. So that's really what's hurting. Quick look at crude, and you had a bit of a retrace. So at 90 dollars a barrel there about on the print now a couple of reasons the US has intelligence that uh, there's going to be a retaliatory attack on Israeli embassies that at least hasn't happened immediately so maybe a, a bit of wait and watch over there maybe a sigh of relief so all of these factors coming in is having that impact on crude no one knows where it's going yet it's not looking very rosy but right of right of this moment we're not seeing any great panic quickly pull up Asia and uh, kind of a mixed morning is what we have seen that's uh, continuing uh, no clear trend over there implied open for India will be important to see uh, this morning and uh, you know considering all of those factors and we are looking like we're in for a bit of pain could also be you know because of the fact that you ended on a record high uh, on Wednesday's uh, closing trade so a bit of maybe profit booking there and overall factors spooking the market just want to quickly pull up fund flows before I hand it to Neeraj for the trade setup of the day and uh, yeah this is what uh, boosted markets on Wednesday's close FBIs were buying so were DIIs and decent figures at least from the FBI end of things today might be a different story though Neeraj yeah and, and again some block deals out there Massachusetts buying into uh, protein and some other bulk deals also leading to this uh, so interesting but could be a different story well uh, you know that's the point that I ask on a trade setup uh, kind of revised it a bit to ask whether is caution warranted if you are indeed an equity investor leverage or otherwise so U.S. sees a missile strike by Israel on Israel by Iran and proxies as imminent. So first sign of danger you see in gold and crude showing signs of that. Crude prices continue to hover around that higher levels of $90 per barrel on the Brent side. So is, is caution warranted, I ask? I mean, crude prices at 70 is a different kettle of fish. 90 and above is a different kettle of fish for India. The latest U.S. CPI print raises the doubts on the Fed pivot in the June policy again something that might not please the street in fact nomura in its note today
has written and Sonal Verma and, and colleagues have written that what if there are no rate cuts this year and what happens to Asia and Asian banks' reactions as a result of this very interesting piece. Some point of time we'll talk about that as well and hopefully get Sonal Verma today or Monday. But yeah, this is something that is very keenly watched out for. Nifty PCR um, at 1.32 is closer to the higher end. Though I must say PCR nowadays behaves um, very, very uh, erratic. It was 1.08 to 1.32 in a matter of 24 hours. So difficult to really call it a very higher lead indicator, but certainly a, a bit of a discomfort there. Uh, unlikely though that in the tax treaty revision will have a very large impact, but that also continues to remain an overhang maybe, and our experts will be best placed to talk about it. But yeah, and therefore the question about whether caution is warranted on the Indian markets, not just for the day, maybe just maybe for the near term only until uh, these clouds clear out. So mm. that's technically the trade setup for the day today. So, so when you say it not have a large impact, um, that's longer term, right? What about today? My sense yeah, is sentiment. that you might see a bit of uh, a downtrend today because sentimentally people are still trying to figure that is this retrospective or not? Yeah, which clarity is not known and hopefully Pranav yeah. and Dinesh Kanabar will be able to yeah. give us a, some inkling about that. They will, they will, but uh, frankly the government has to come out and yes. say this. Yes, And they if need this, to. Was hap this was happening on March 7th, then we also need to ask what's taken so long to put this in the public domain fine, you have new rules coming in, but let's have transparency. Yes. I mean, the market and equity participants and investors deserve that. Now, having said that, uh, let's get to specific stocks and what's on the radar. Now, um, uh, my colleague Vishwanath Nair broke a story um, on Wednesday on Vodafone's FPO. That story has been confirmed. That news break on NDTV Profit has been confirmed. And uh, now we know that the board will be filing an RHP in connection with that FPO. Uh, it's about 18,000 crores. Um, the bid and offer opening date is April 18th, closing date April 22nd, anchor investor bid April 16th. So you might see some movement on Vodafone today. Of course, the big question on how successful that attempt at raising 18,000 crores is going to be obviously remains, but we'll wait and see. Uh, very quickly, Dr. Reddy's uh, is another one that I thought we should talk about. Now they have this um, interesting product which is a drug-free migraine management device. It's called uh, Nerevio. They launched it in India in 2023. It's launching now in Germany through their subsidy beta farm and marks their entry into digital therapeutics in Europe. Neeraj, uh, wh why I found this interesting is because if you see that device, it's actually an armband. And migraine is one of those pesky things that people struggle with. So it's an armband and it helps apparently with your migraine. So it could be an interesting... Um, product and also a foray for the company into devices in Europe in this sense. Um, CAMS is the other one I thought we should talk about. They've got the RBI Nord to operate as an online payment aggregator. As it is, this is a company that's been doing very, very well. Stock market does well, CAMS does well in terms of fundamentally of course, uh, where their numbers go, and uh, now this is another trigger. Their subsidiary, which is going to front this, so to say, CAMS Pay, has registered more than 1.2 million mandates uh, for UPI. My only question, though, is, um, you know, are there enough margins in this kind of a space? UPI doesn't really leave anything on the table for the facilitators, but uh, that would be interesting to see as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, so those are a few. I'll watch out for the results today, of course, TCS and Andrati, both of them likely to come out post-market hours. But on TCS, interestingly, there's been short covering seen since March end. The OI is down 15% and the stock is up 2% uh, since that period. And therefore, uh, do keep a keen eye on for TCS. There has been a bit of an upward movement ahead of the numbers, maybe for a clutch of IT names, but TCS in particular. So watch out for TCS. $725 million OI is slightly above its one-year one mean as well. So shorts still existing despite the short covering already seen. Uh, so watch out for TCS in particular in the session today, uh, ahead of the numbers as well. And remember, on, on, on the closing show today, we'll do a deep dive into what are the things that could move the needle on TCS and the FNO positions as of that point of time at 3 p.m. So uh, TCS is something we'll keep you updated with. Uh, we'll talk about the listing also in a bit, but first, Phoenix Mills Q4 update. The total consumption up 27% YOI at 2,818 crores. The gross retail collections are up 37% at 791 crores. 
this has to go out as a very strong update for quarter four. As a result of which, I think their annual numbers also came to about 22, 23%. Not a bad number at all. I mean, we're talking about consumption in the K-shaped curve. And I think for Phoenix Mills kind of justifies this, right? Essentially, you're talking about the retail collections, not about the hotel revenue, revenues. And this seems to be a good number. So watch out for Phoenix Mills in the session today. I don't know if you've been buying. Uh, I certainly haven't been, but clearly there's some strong <laughs> momentum there. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, just just to add to the, and, and I would say underline the point that you made about uh, where the whole question mark remains on the consumption story. Are people Ooh. going out and buying? Well, at least Phoenix Mills shows uh, uh, that they are. And this is no longer just a very urban premium kind of a play. Yeah. Uh, this shows the overall demand very much there, at least in mm. some pockets. Yeah. yeah, Phoenix Mills certainly enjoying that. And Metropolis was interesting. So the core business revenue grew by about 15%, but also they repaid all of the debt resulting in a debt-free status as of March 31st. Now, maybe this brings about a reaction. Remember, Metropolis has climbed a long way from 1,200 about a year ago to 1,800. So there has been a retracement in some of these uh, diagnostic companies as well over the last one month, the last one year. Let's wait and watch if there is some more upticks uh, on the back of this announcement today. So these are the first three on my list. Um, there are some others too, Tamanna, uh, but anything that else has stood out for yeah, you? Yeah, I just wanted to talk about the Tesla story. And uh, there's this interesting list uh, that uh, our colleague Puneet uh, put out. Uh, and uh, going through that, adding maybe a couple of more, which I thought were uh, possible beneficiary. So in, in case you missed it, uh, now there's a confirmation that Elon Musk will be coming to India. He'll be having a conversation with Prime Minister Modi. Uh, it's coming at a time when we're expecting a concrete announcement of Tesla's plans for India. Now, anything they do in India will have to have a make in India component. And uh, that means a great opportunity for a clutch of companies in that space. Uh, we don't know exactly which ones, obviously, those those announcements haven't happened, uh, but those that uh, are well positioned and maybe could see some play as early as today, or this is a trend that you should watch out for. So Sona BLW is one of them. Uh, already has some work that they're doing for this car maker, but 28% uh, of their revenue is already from the EV space. Sancera Engineering is the other one, 18% of its order book from its EV space. Mother Sumi Endurance Tech, Uno Minda uh, are those that are positioned. I thought I'd add a Varrock Engineering as well. Varrock uh, is another uh, interesting play for something like this. So uh, great times, I think, for uh, Indian uh, auto ank players as well, if the big boys come in and then have to do at least something make in India. Yeah, I mean, I'll be interested in seeing what SKF India has to do as well as the sole supplier of bearings to Tesla worldwide. Mm. And therefore, suffice to say that SKF India would possibly benefit out of this as well. So very interesting as to what's happening. Rolex is making a dedicated line for SKF USA for Tesla being the leader in the ball bearing segment. So Rolex rings, I mean, you know, trades at 18, 20 times. So some of these companies are not exorbitantly priced as well. Mm. So that's pretty interesting too. Uh, watch out for... Um, Watch out for uh, Maharashtra Seamless, uh, has received an order worth 674 crores from ONGC, so that's to be watched out for. Um, I, and, and, and a couple of other things. Um, so GQG uh, has raised stakes in the Adani Group uh, between Jan and March. And uh, just a small table which depicts where is it that they have bought in. Because remember, they were existing shareholders in a big way, and they've only upped their stakes, so to say. Adani Energy Solutions from 2% to 4.53, Adani Power, northwards of 5%, Adani Ports, Enterprises, some upticks there, and Adani Green, some uptick there as well. The only one where they have gone down is Ambuja from 1.83 to 1.68. Uh, so that's one uh, stock where they pulled back, but otherwise, they've upped the uh, game on the Adani Group. And lastly, just do we have our guests? We do have our guests very quickly. Uh, just brokerage notes, just want to mention these. The Goldman note on CDMO companies. Loris has been very active the last few days. Goldman says that Loris is a sell and a target price of 350. Very interesting. We'll get in our colleagues a bit later on the show to tell why this is the case. And a call on Newland Labs, a buy with a target price of 9100. That's nearly a 50% upside. So do watch out for these as well. So these are a few stocks that you need to keep an eye out for. But I think we have our guest uh, 
So let's go across to them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just one quick mention of Bharti Hexacom before we go up, yeah. just because it's the IPO of the morning. It's an exciting one. And this, uh, there's already a, a note on it. JM Financial has already initiated coverage uh, with a buy. Uh, so I would just uh, look at Bharti Hexacom uh, this morning. The issue price of 570 and JM Financial has already got a target price of 790. Uh, remember, they were subscribed nearly 30 times. So. That's going to be an uh, interesting one.